Hello again SG Beers, I'm Companion Wolf. In this week's Smile Game Builder tutorial I'm going through the process of creating a public playable game once you've finished creating it. This has been requested several times now so I thought I'd do it this week. If you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button to be notified when I upload new videos. Before I start, I'd like to give a shout out to Jacob's Monster Pack Volume 1, created by Jacob Mann. I mentioned this in a previous tutorial, but now it's available on Steam. Be sure to show him you su your support and buy this remarkable asset pack. And sometime in July, I'm hoping to get this for myself, and trust me, I'll be showcasing it shortly there after. I'll put the links to um, the Steam store and Jacob's Facebook page in the description. So when you've created your game and you're ready to create a public game for others to download and play, Here's how to export it. In game file, you would create a public game file, and then you'll be presented with this window where you can change the output folder. By default, SGB will export it into the same folders your games, but you can change it to somewhere else if you want to. I usually just stick with the default so that everything is in the same place. Also by default, SGB will add a an underscore PUB to distinguish it as a public output of the game and again you can delete this or change this accordingly. You can then change the game's icon since I'm using the Zelda-like forest maze tutorial for this video. I'm going to be using the thumbnail for this. Create the largest size 256 by 256 and SGB will more gracefully reduce its size for you. And after you've done that it'll prepare all the files in your project by copying them into the project folder and then it'll export them to a playable executable format as we'll see. This might take a little while so I'll just speed through this. Now with that done, if we go into the folder it was saved in, <coughs> you can see all of the various files there. In addition to the README, which lists the keys and the gamepad controls that SGB uses, the copywriting and licensing information, and there are a number of dependent files in here as well. The MCV ones are the Microsoft Visual C++ file and its runtime. And then these two KMY ones are to do with Smileboom's proprietary graphics system, I think. And under, under the EN folder, which might be different depending on what language it is, it's the SGB player resources DLL, which I presume is for the player itself, the, the, the play window itself, to tie in all of the resources and such dependence. Now one of the cool things about SGB is that you will notice there are no resources. These are all compacted into the data SGB pack to prevent unscrupulous people from stealing your IP contact. This is especially important if you've created your own graphics and models or even sounds and music and don't want others accessing them. It's all compacted in there and as you can see there, yeah, that it's about 74 megabytes. Obviously it can be much larger than that depending on the size of your game including any customized models you have. 
The next thing is the SGB RPG player, which obviously is the executable for your game, and you can rename this. It'll run as it should, provided you don't alter its extension. I'm going to rename it Zelda like Forest Maze just for this demo. And when it's double clicked, the gameplay window will open up. So now we can play. as you would normally. Now let's see, it's been a while since I've actually done this, so I may... I'm just curious. Maybe... More... And there, I did. Anyway, for those interested in knowing how to do that one, I'll put the link to that in the description below. Now for distribution, you can either use a zip file to manually extract the game or an executable auto extraction file. To do this, right click on the main game folder and you should have an option to add it to an archive. I use 7-zip, which is much more reliable than other programs, such as WinZip and WinRare, but it's just a matter of choice. You can choose which format you want to compress it to. I'm going to use the 7z first and then it'll make its archive. And actually I'm just curious about something. Um, I'm going to create another zip file to see how much of a compression rate it, it actually does make. So just out of curiosity, the 7Z is 61 megabytes and the zip is 64 megabytes. So it does make a difference. About three megabytes. And this is kind of like why 7-zip would be a better option all round, especially if you're worried about bandwidth. But then again, nowadays nobody really cares about that anymore. I usually check the zip files as well, just to make sure everything is in. And yeah, as you would expect, everything is there. You can also create an executable extract. So once again, we would use the right click 7-zip option and then add to archive. And then make sure that the proprietary format, in this case 7-z, is in the archive format. Check create SFX option and then it'll compress the zipped files into um, a single executable archive. And after it's done, you can name it to whatever you like. So, in this case, 
forest mace install. Again, that's something I like doing just for a bit of distinction rather than just having install or setup, which could mean absolutely everything. And I hate it when you download programs and it just says setup, well, what you're setting up. It gives that more information as to what you're actually installing. So when it's in opened up again, um, as you'd expect, you can choose where you want to install it and then you extract it and it will be as normal. All of the contents would be there. And this concludes another tutorial. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe for more videos. Don't forget to click on the bell icon next to the subscribe as well if you want to be informed of when I upload more content. Usually it's every Sunday or Monday, but sometimes when I'm unable to upload a video, um, I've started writing regular weekly tutorial articles on the SGB subsite, which go through a range of topics. Currently the topic is advanced variables. So if there's no video for the week, guaranteed there will be something on the subsite. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook for news, updates on all of my projects and sometimes some unique content I don't put anywhere else. Or you can visit the official Smile Game Builder subsite and the RPG Maker Times blog for more SGB and RPG Maker related stuff. Again, all of the links will be in the description. For next week's tutorial, if all goes well, I will be putting up a video on how to use your mobile phone as a gamepad to play Smile Game Builder games. I have tested out a few of the available apps and have pretty much narrowed it down to just one. So it's easy to set up. So that's something for next week's video. In the meantime, that's it for another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.